Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, uh, and I am your host and teacher, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest Sea Church in Harvest, Alabama. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together over this technology of Facebook and conference calls to just teach and preach your word and share your word with people all over the world. We ask you, Lord, that you anoint afresh this technology, use it to your glory and to your honor. And Lord, we ask you that you touch everyone that is listening in, Lord, anoint afresh. We plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, over their homes, over their communities and neighborhoods, over their cities, states, towns, and countries, Lord. We plead your blood because there's power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've already done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. But most of all, Lord, we thank you because of who you are. You are our Lord and our Savior. You gave us Jesus the Christ to, to down the cross for our sins and you raised him from the dead. Jesus, you are our Lord. You are our Savior and we thank you for just being who you are. Loving, merciful, and gracious friend that sticks closer than any brother. We ask you now, dear Heavenly Father, that you just send down your Holy Spirit and anoint afresh. Be true to your word where two or three are gathered in your name. You said you would be in the midst. So be in the midst of us right now in the name of Jesus. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning again, everyone. Uh, our Sunday school lesson this morning comes from... Um, the book of Judges, Old Testament book of Judges. Um, uh, the story is about Gideon, a familiar story. We're going to be dealing with Gideon's calling. Um, the way that they did the lesson, they, they only dealt with his calling. They didn't really go into all that happened after his calling and all of that. So we're we just going to look at his calling this morning and, and dig deep into that for a minute and, and just, just enjoy what the text says. So, uh, turn with me to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. And um, in Judges chapter 6, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this out of a New Living Translation this morning. A New Living Translation of the Bible. And it reads, Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree of Oprah. And which belonged to Joaz of the clan of Abizar. Gideon, son of Joaz, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero or mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites? Then the Lord turned to him and, and said, Go with the, the strength of you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I'm sending you. Verse 15. But Lord, Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh. And I am the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you. 
and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Gideon replied, If you are truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that it is really the Lord speaking to me. Don't go away until I come back and bring my offering to you, he said, and I will stay here, and he said, and I will stay here until you return. Amen, amen. And so this, this, this lesson, this lesson, the key verse, the key verse for the lesson is verse 12. Um, the, the New Living Translation uh, says the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero or mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. And in this, in this, this is, this is a, a text that, 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 that talks about this judge named Gideon and remember as we talked about on last week Gideon or, or the book of Judges is in that time period where the 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 children of Israel have have moved into the land flowing with milk and honey Joshua has conquered the land and everybody has their place in the land the whole tribe of Israel but there are still Canaanites in the land and the Canaanites have influenced the Israelites. Or the Israelites have chosen to follow after the Canaanites. And so what end up happening, they start following after the Canaanite gods. And, 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 and God is a jealous God. He don't, he don't play that. He, he wants us to follow him. He wants us to, 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 to do as he would have us to do. And, and so they did. And so in the midst of this, um, God allowed other nations, other tribes to come up against them. The Philistines, the Midianites, the Amalites, the Amalekites, and all these different tribes came up against them to oppress them because he understood, God understood, that if they went through this situation, they would then turn towards God because they had been disobedient. And oftentimes God allows us to, to allow situations, excuse me, to occur when we are disobedient to his will. Uh, it, it isn't that he's really punishing us. He, it is, he's allowing the consequences of our sins to manifest themselves, have mercy. And so here it was, well, that was the situation during the time of judges. And last week we looked at Deborah. Deborah was a judge and she had... A, a, a general named Barak with him, with her, and they went and defeated um, uh, uh, the the people that were coming against them. And so here it is now, uh, Gideon. Uh, this man Gideon is being visited by the Lord. The Scripture says that that he he's getting visited by the Lord. The angel of the Lord appeared. And we, we know this angel of the Lord that appeared is, is Jesus himself. Manifested in the flesh to come and sit and talk with Gideon. Hallelujah. And so Gideon, he is from the tribe of Manasseh. And, and of the tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh was, was Joseph's son. His oldest son born in, 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 in Egypt. And of the tribe of Manasseh, uh, 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 Gideon comes from the clan called Abinzar. And that was a small clan. That was uh, the least clan. And, and it was also understood that not only was he from this, this small clan of, 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 of uh, Manasseh, and Manasseh itself was a, was a small uh, uh, clan, he, he, his own brothers have probably already been killed by the Midianites. And so here he was, trying to do what he was supposed to do, and he was hiding doing it. And we're going to get into that in a minute. But, but, but I just want to just raise up some of that background right there. The key concept of this lesson is you don't have to be afraid when you are or when you have God by your side. 
I'm going to read that again. You don't have to be afraid when you have God by your side. The keys for kids for this lesson is that there is no reason to ever be scared when we know God, the creator of the universe. And number two, God will always help us and encourage us. Our lesson aims for today is to describe uh, the learning facts is to describe the encounter between Gideon and the angel of the Lord. And we're going to get in that real quick here. And then the biblical principle is to trust in the Lord no matter if we feel unqualified for the task because of perceived inadequacy. And then the daily application is to allow God to lead you in building personal confidence. So, so first part of our lesson, first part of our lesson, we're going to look at uh, do what you can. And that's verses 11 through 12. And, and here it is. Listen to these verses again. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree of Oprah, which belonged to Joaz of the clan of uh, Abizar. Gideon, son of Josh, uh, Joaz, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. Well, Gideon, we described who he was, was sitting in a wine press. Wine press is, a, is, a, is typically a, 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 a big, big bowl, if you will, concrete, and, and they smash the grapes and then at the at the bottom there's a place that vents out the the the, the grape juice that that are from the grapes and then they take that and create wine because they, they're pressing and so you can go into this wine press and you could also go and beat wheat now here's the thing there is a way of threshing wheat threshing wheat typically was done by putting a, 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 a threshing floor, a concrete floor, and then having a roller over it, and then having a horse or a donkey pull the roller across it, crushing the, the, the wheat kernel, and then the chaff would blow away, and then you would have, have, have wheat. Well, in, in doing that, you would uh, make a whole lot of noise. And the Midianites were always watching the, the, the Israelites. They were watching them. If they were going thrashing some, some wheat, then after they got through thrashing the wheat, then the Midianites would show up and take the wheat that they had just, just got through cleaning. And so here he was, scared and afraid, and instead of thrashing wheat on a threshing floor where everybody could see him, he was ducking and dodging inside of a wine press beating the wheat and then the angel of the Lord showed up when we're doing the best we can when 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 even in the midst of of fear or anxiety or whatever it is when we're doing the best that we can God will show up and the angel of the Lord appeared to him Jesus showed up Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but Jesus has shown up in my life in many a different situations where, where whether I was falling, I had fallen and, and got into some mess or, or, or because of my own failures and shortcomings and sin, or he just showed up because I didn't have confidence in whatever I was doing and trying to do my best at it. But God showed up. And that's, and that's the beauty of this lesson with Gideon. The angel of the Lord showed up while he was doing what he can. And so, when the angel of the Lord showed up, the angel of the Lord spoke words to him. And the first word he says to him is the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. The Lord is with thee. I, 
I don't, I don't know if you, you can hear those words. The Lord is with you. And now those are beautiful words to hear, especially in the time when, when if you are falling or you in fear or you in despair, it is good to know that the Lord is with you. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He is with you. In your time of trouble, in your time of discouragement, in your time of frustration, in your time of whatever you're going through, God is with you. And then he says something. Not only was he with Gideon, but God described Gideon. He called him a mighty man of valor. He called him a hero. It may have seemed like to, 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 to Gideon that he was a zero, but God saw him as a hero. So I, I have a little saying that I, I, I like to say it as New Harvest Church I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I have what God says I have. And that's based on various scriptures in the Bible. And here God is telling Gideon. You, you're not a zero. You're a hero. You are a mighty man of valor. I, I, I know I see what you're doing. You, 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 you hide and you shucking and jive and you, you concern, you in fear that, that, that the Midianites are going to come and do stuff to you. But I'm here to tell you, you are a mighty man of God. Oh, everyone on this line tonight or this morning, here it is. God is saying to you, you a mighty man of God. You a mighty woman of God. I got things I want you to do. And I'm going to be with you every step of the way. Oh, hallelujah. It doesn't matter how you feel about yourself or feel about your situation and circumstance. It does not even matter about how you have failed in the past. God is still saying, I'm still here with you. I'm ready to forgive you. I'm ready to restore you. I'm ready to exalt you because... I need you to do some work for me. I need you. And that's what God is saying to Gideon. And I believe he's saying the same thing to us. Then in the next verse, after he hears these words, God is with you. You're a mighty man of God. He hears these words and Gideon says, Sir, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. Well, he remembered the past. And he remembered the past based on his present perspective. He only saw his present problems. He only saw his present predicament. But he did not have the proper perspective of what he knew about the past. What he should have been saying, I know that God has delivered us in the past. My ancestors told us about how great he delivered us in the past. And I know he can deliver us right now. But instead of having that positive perspective, because of his predicament, all he saw was the problem. 
and he didn't even take into account that he was blaming God for his problem instead of understanding that it was the people of Israel who had been disobedient in the first place. The people played a role in this particular situation. They were the ones who turned from God. God did not move. God did not change his position. They moved from God. So I say to us, oftentimes when we are facing problems and situations, we are not to run from God, but to run to God. And I love this text in the sense that the angel of the Lord, Jesus himself, that's what I told you the angel of the Lord was, God, God allowed him to ask these questions. He is big enough. God is big enough to deal with our questions. And he's even big enough to deal with our false accusations of who he is. Because he's patient like that. He knows that he's going to be there with us and he's going to lead us and guide us and get us to the place where we can Speak positive about it. Instead of talking about how big our problem is, we'll start talking about how big our God is. And so, he remembered the past and all the trials and tribulations that Israel had faced and how God had delivered them, but, but he was questioning why this was happening now. And every time we ask that question, why God, why God, why is this going on? We're we going to hear this response. Why not? Don't, don't, don't be always trying to figure it out. Just trust God. Trusting God is more important than for us to know why stuff is going on. Because here's the whole thing. We've heard this saying, we don't know what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future. So, so as long as we're trusting and depending on God, God will take care of everything that we need in his own time, in his own way. And he'll give us the strength to hold on. I, 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 I preached the message on Friday night. Are you, you yet holding on? I'm yet holding on. I, I don't know when my change is going to come, but I know my change is going to come. I'm yet holding on to God's unchanging hands. And so here it is. Gideon was doing what he could, and now he, he, he's remembering the past as he's talking to the angel of the Lord. And so now the angel of the Lord Starts talking back to him and telling him some things in verse 14 through 16. Listen, then the angel, then the Lord turned to him. Go with the strength you have and rescue Israelite from the Midianites. I'm sending you. And let me stop right there because I don't want to just deal with his response. I want to deal with what the angel said to him. When Gideon was asking the questions earlier in verses 13 and, 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 and 12 and uh, verse 13, when he was asking all those questions, he was talking about the children of Israel. But what he didn't realize in verse 12, the angel of the Lord said, I will be with you. King James says, I will be with thee. It's personal. Everybody ain't got the same calling you got. Everybody ain't got the same anointing you got. You are the one God is calling out. You are the one God is singling out to help the people that he is designing you to serve. 
And you can't be looking at all those people and say, well, well, why ain't they doing this? No, God ain't calling them. He's calling you. And that's what the Lord told them. Say, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I'm sending you. God is sending you to rescue all of Israel. Oh, God is sending each one of us. Your, your sphere of influence. You, you may not feel like you're qualified for this calling. You, you may not feel like you're worthy to do this. You may not feel any of this, but God is calling you to your particular sphere of influence. And it just may be one person that you have to talk to, one person that you have to minister to, one person that you have to rescue, one person. But that one that God has called you to may be the one that blesses millions. And so Gideon, when he heard what the angel of the Lord said, what the Lord said to him, he contradicted God. The message, I mean, the New Living Translation says in verse 15, but Lord, oh mercy, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I'm in the least in the entire family. Yep, I ain't qualified. But I'm here to tell you, if you're a child of God, God will qualify you. He, 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 he doesn't just call the qualified to a particular position, but he calls the unqualified to the position he wants them to be in, and then he qualifies them. He gives us everything that we need to do the task that he has designed and designated for us to do. Oh, hallelujah. So the Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Hallelujah. He's going to give him enough strength to fight the Midianites as if he was just one, if they were just one man. Oh, that's some power. Midianites were, they had been oppressing the people for so long, but God was making it so that Gideon, this zero who's now going to a hero, would be able to fight the Midianites, all of them, as if they were just one man. Oh, hallelujah. God will qualify those that he calls. And our last point, coming from verses 17 and 18, is worshiping and waiting. You say, wait a minute, worshiping and waiting? Let's read the text. You'll see it come out of here. New Living Translation says, And Gideon replied, If you are truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that it is really the Lord speaking to me. Don't go away until I come back and bring my offering to you, he said. And, and bring my offering to you. Then he said, and this is the Lord saying, I will stay here until you return. Oh, hallelujah. Gideon asked for a sign, and oftentimes we ask for a sign. We, we want to know if this is truly the Lord telling us what to do, when to do, and how to do it. He asked for a sign, and, you know, the other parts of, of, of the book of Gideon, he put out a fleece and all of that. But, but, but we're not there yet. That, we're not going to talk about all of that. We're just talking about where he is right now and what he wanted to do was he wanted to be assured that he was really in the presence of the Lord. And he said, I'm going to go get my offering. 
And he asked the Lord, are you willing to wait on me to bring my offering? And the Lord responded, yes, I'm willing to wait on you to worship me. Oh, I'm saying something to someone right now. God is waiting on us to worship him. To bring our offering of praise. Our praise and our worship. A sacrifice of our love for him. He's waiting on us. And when we worship him in spirit and in truth. When we praise him, he will meet us right there and give us the directions that we need. Have you worshiped the Lord? Have you, have you just spent time just praising him? And, and worship is not always corporate. Worship should always be personal. It may not always be corporate. But it always should be personal. So let me say that another way. Whether you in church or whether you by yourself, your worship of God should be personal. And that's 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 what 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 qualified, I believe, Gideon. He finally got to the point where he worshiped the Lord in spirit and in truth. If God will tell you that you're something special and he got a special plan for you, would you worship him or would you wear it? He's waiting on you to make that decision. And he's going to be right there with you, helping you and strengthening you. And so you know how the story goes with Gideon. He, after he was assured and confident that it was the Lord that told him and they went through and eventually they had a battle with the Midianites and they defeated the Midianites by the power of God. Never to be oppressed by them again. Whatever's oppressing you, if you worship the Lord, worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Give him praise with your lips and with your life. He will make a way out of no way. Because when praises go up, blessings do come down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we end this recording today, I want you to hear me. God plus you is a majority. If he's with you, that's all you need. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the promise of your presence in the battle against sin and for giving the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Regardless of everything that's going on in our lives, we trust you, God. We trust you for the victory. We trust you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. As always, before I leave the recordings and close this conference call and Facebook Live, I'd like to give those who are listening an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Let us pray the prayer of salvation. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sin. Please forgive me of my sin and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Those that are on uh, Facebook, you can join us on the conference call for questions and, and conversation and fellowship. The conference call number is 
918-218-0531. Again, 910-218-0531. Facebook, be blessed, and may God keep you.